is the intro. <laughs> oh, very nice. Hello, hello, Jeannie. Good to see you. Um, today, Christina and I are holding down the fort for Bad Batch episode 13 of season three. Um, what was this one called again? Into the Breach. Into the Breach. Into the Breach. That, I, I don't even, I don't understand what that title means. The only thing I sort of, so I, I feel like breach can mean like crack or something. Yeah, but like and into so, the crack? As a noun. Yeah. So into the crack, into the security <laughs> flaw, into right. the, that's our way. But yeah, it's, uh, yeah. there must be a reason that wording it that like that is acceptable. Like a cultural something that's common. Yeah, or if they're trying to like do a thing with it. Like, it is a very Star Wars-y name, like, Into the Dark, mm -hmm. or whatever. But yeah, Into the Breach, interesting title name. Yeah. King Henry V. Oh. Does, what is, is that a the quote? Connection? I'm looking it up. Okay, once more, oh, it's a famous, okay, once more unto the beach, sorry, breach, dear friends. I am seeing it now, uh, a speech. Okay. Oh, can you let us know, like, what happens to them? Do they all die in the end? Can we get a prognosis <laughs> going on here based on this Henry V situation? It basically means try again until you succeed. Okay. Oh. That's more hopeful than... I originally thought, because I mean, obviously, a lot of Shakespeare works are dooming for every character. Um, oh, well, I mean, I think Henry V is a pretty dooming. I mean, it's been a while since I've I don't read it. I don't associate it with positivity. Yeah, I don't. Exp yeah, I don't either. Yeah. I'm just going to highlight this line. Be copied now to men of grosser blood and teach them how to war. And you, good men. But just saying, anything that's dark. Well, thank you for the context, Chuck. I thank you. That's great. I immediately know that, yeah. Omega escaped once, and the intention is to, once more, try again. Cool. I just realized we haven't got, we didn't get the, um, the Omega, like, the theme, the root, the daily routine theme in this episode. We definitely did get the M count kids, but we didn't get the like daily routine one. And it and maybe it's because the routine is completely different now that she's in a new place, or maybe it's just I don't know new thematic material. Different music was more felt more right or something. But yeah, this does feel a little bit Groundhog Day ish. It does. And last episode, we were wondering if the openings, or maybe the closings, or maybe both, would be, would continue to be different until the end of the season. And indeed, in this episode, there also was another, like, immediate, aggressive synth. I really like that. It was like, wow. Yeah. Wow. And I wanted to ask Justin or someone what shape of the wave they thought that would be because I like to hear whether things are like a saw wave or a square wave oh. or some other intense wave, obviously not a sine wave. Right, right, right. Or at least obvious, obviously not a single sine wave, but I felt like it was a, I have trouble telling between saw waves and square waves. And mm, okay. Different. Yeah. So if anyone knows of sound waves, examples. That, that was probably a square wave or a, I'm going to, I'm actually going to play some examples for actually, <laughs> I have a synth in front of me. It's just not connected at the moment. So I'm just going to play examples from <gasps> some other thing. Oh no. I don't want talking though. I just want like to click and then sound the waves. Yeah, Different nice. types of sound waves. I'll find something. Um, audio examples. So actually Justin did record. So Justin, as usual, sent a couple examples and did send an example from the beginning of the episode. So um, we can listen to what he did. 
Yeah. Okay, wait, no, I found something. I found something. Okay. I found something for the different types of ways. So, so that, um, people in chat can hear what we're talking about. So first of all, a sine wave, um, oh, Max, this, the synth that I have is, um, the Arturia Mini Brute 2S. Um, I'll show you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's the Mini Brute. Yep. Camera back on. Okay. Um, the reason I haven't been able to plug it in lately is because I need a, I need like um, an electricity something. I need something. I need a, I need this piece of equipment that will make it safer and smoother for me to plug all of my electronics in. Because when I plug the synth in, I get like, I don't know what it is, like a ground loop. I get like horrible sounds because of too many things plugged in at once. Um, Okay, so a sine wave, which looks like this, is the simplest kind of, simplest waveform, and it sounds like this. It's basically like when you get your ears checked. Just a very pure, yeah. It's um, also, I think, the most replicable by the human voice by going, Whoa. It's easiest to make a perfect wave. I feel like it's not very easy to make a perfect wave. Ooh. But compared to making a perfect square wave or triangle wave, just to be clear. That's true. But the thing is, the human voice, or, okay, so most, most things that aren't electronically generated are going to have so many different waves happening at once. So it will just be a much more complex sound, no matter what. The thing that I actually, cause like when I look at spectrogram, like when I look at, when I look at like imaging, I guess, when I, of different instruments, the one that comes the closest to looking like a sine wave is, or the, making like a very pure tone that doesn't have very much, um, as much, other noise is is a flute. I believe that. Um, the sine wave was also used for the Doctor Who theme. Which Doctor Who theme? Or is there only one? I think there are so many different composers for Doctor Who, but I can't remember if there's like one solid theme. They're really good soundtracks, though. Like lot, very synthy. Um, like I've listened, or I, I really like the Delia Derbyshire stuff. Um, but anyway, okay, so these are, these are, okay, so then there's another type of wave called a square wave. Looks like this. Oh, they only have an example of a sine wave. Okay, I'm gonna, I can just Google this. Square wave <laughs> audio. Lazy. So silly. Okay, here's a square wave. But I like their square wave font. Nope, wait. To be clear, that was multiple oscillators. It, that was, yeah. Um, and then a triangle wave. These are just the main waves. Um, a triangle wave looks like this. Oh, dear. Are you okay? Mm-hmm. I sneezed. Okay, here's another square wave. There we go. Thank you, different website. And this is sine, right? Big difference between sine and square. Oh. It's buzzier, the square wave. And then the triangle wave is. So it's like, it contains the same odd harmonics as a square wave. Unlike a square wave, they taper off as they get further away from the fundamental, given its shape. Um, it looks like an angular sine wave. And it's somewhere between a square wave and a sine wave. 
It's not as buzzy as a square, but not as smooth as a sine wave. And then the last kind of is going to be a sawtooth wave, which looks like this. And it's going to be more jagged. Yes. Okay. Anyway, mm. so Christina asking what kind of wave, what kind of waves were in the intro. Um, so Max is saying the intro. Oh, the intro, Doctor Who. I see what you're saying. What you're saying. Well, let's hear Justin's example, Justin's recreation of the opening. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know either. What I do hear is it's something with a formant because you hear that owl mm. shape difference. Can and you explain what a formant is? That was <laughs> mostly my explanation. I want to explain <laughs> what a formant is. <laughs> um. I'm terrible are with actual definitions on the That's okay. More. That's why I asked you. I wasn't test like yeah, I was just like, can you explain for my benefit? Like I know what it is, but I yeah, don't know how really. to explain it. Um, formants are frequency peaks in the spectrum which have a high degree of energy. They are especially prominent in vowels. Okay, I'm just gonna do something that I should have already done. I'm gonna open. Okay, I'm glad this is fascinating. Um, okay, okay, we're gonna we're about to, we're gonna let's see if this will work. Let's see if I can show you test okay sorry i didn't mean to do that did i no i didn't mean to do that um there might be a way that i can show you the what you call it while we're while making sound it's it's possible that it won't work because of routing Ooh. all different kinds of audio and whatnot, but maybe, maybe. Okay. Screen share. Nope, that's the wrong thing. In the meantime, I will sing it for you again. Wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Like a bow bun. Like a bow bun? Uh, that's how I always write it. Like I write bow, like B A O. Like a bun, like a steam bun. Testing, testing, testing. Okay. Woo. So <laughs> right now you're looking at this like spectral frequency spectrogram spectrogram, um, which shows you the frequencies, like, okay, okay, okay. Like, spectrograms are very cool. Um, so it's a visual representation of the spectrum of frequencies of a signal as it varies with time. So basically, like, the pitches, um, the frequencies that are the most present are going to be like the darkest red and it, the the parts that are black space are going to be like very little sound and of course if I just do silence <laughs> oops let's delete everything let's delete this okay if I just do silence then okay so I'm talking right now but if I'm quiet it's just, you're just, just going to be black now if I play like the open E string on the violin You're seeing all the overtones there. That's why it looks kind of like a comb. Like it looks like very distinct lines. So the y-axis is going to be time. As you can see, the thing is the thingy is moving, showing the progress of time. The x-axis is going to be frequency. Um, oh, and you can see the difference between when I use vibrato or not. So like. And if I vibrate that, do 
you see how it's like messier? Can you play one of my suspicions for how those note tones were created, which is a low note and then a, a like create a, and then a low note that's all, uh, what am I trying to say? Like a second, can you play a, like two notes at once? And yeah. there are seconds that they beat against each other, which I suspect is often what happens when we hear cool sounds low down. Yes. Okay. So to play one note and then add a second note? Yeah, or play them at the same time. Okay. As you can see, the the notes that were higher are going to have. Sorry, every I shouldn't. I just shouldn't keep stopping because then it highlights the whole thing automatically. I'll do that again. So lower, you're going to see much more, many more lines, and that's because the lower your the, the fundamental note is like the main note that you hear. So it's going to be like G and D. Th those are the fundamental notes, and then all the other notes, and the fundamental note will be the the lowest. Uh, okay, and then all the all the extra thingies above that are going to be harmonics. The lower you start your fundamental, the more harmonics you're going to be able to perceive. Um, so, versus. So you have lots. Of, you have fewer lines. <laughs> it's cool how that works. It is very cool. And if you and white noise, for white noise, you'll just hear a, I mean, you would just see on the spectrogram, just the whole thing is like equally red. I don't know if I can recreate that. Like, can you like bow your. Nice. <laughs> that was a good way to do it. Yeah. It's rather fascinating. Um, can you seeing a perfect tone? Do you not like just sing a nice. A, a per, try to be a flute. Yeah, you can see a very, you well, can see defined thing. pitch material and everything. And then a lot more white noisy looking stuff above. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh. I know, now I'm we like, need what to get do I some cat. Here? We need to analyze the cat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let me see if it can pick up just let me see if I play Justin's example if it'll I can probably actually load it in there what am I talking about I, I'll just load in Justin's example let's do that <laughs> okay yay okay I might accidentally be okay here we go there we go we stayed off the empire. oops okay so here we have Do you see that? Mm hmm Great. It looks like infrared rain. Oh, loud. Very low. That's cool. You can see, like, the point of onset because of these clear like the shelf basically he where he where yeah. it loops, or where he repeats i don't think it's it actually has... a loop because you can see they're a little bit different lengths this also brings up that kind of exciting yet confusing thing that comes up when we analyze waves or anything to do with sound waves because it from here it looks like a sawtooth wave mm-hmm even though obviously it's that's not what we're seeing. It's just interesting that in music there's this weird reflexive quality of when we try to visualize it, where the visuals always there's always misleading things where it's like, oh yeah, that totally looks like it could be that thing, and it's you know it's not, but it it looks like it could be. Yeah, visualizing things is interesting. Like here, actually, we see two different types of visualization that are used in music production or, you know, in music, <laughs> two different ways to, to look at the sound that we're hearing. The top one is, I forgot what that's called, spectrogram versus, um, 
Oh, it's probably just <laughs> probably oscillogram, oscillogram, maybe. I don't know. Just whatever. That's the normal one we see, the top top view, the, like the wave. That one is more about volume, exactly. right? Exactly. Yep. So for both of them, yeah. the y-axis is doing like time, but then that one is def that one is volume. And the reason we see them doubled is just because stereo, so left, right. And so, yeah, it's just a representation of volume. And then the bottom one is primarily a representation of frequency, but also the volume of the frequency. So, yeah. But the, fir the top one doesn't include frequency material at all. Um, oh, I'm using Adobe Audition. Another... And another good distinction is like the the word that you use to describe it. So we're talking about hertz in the bottom graph, and mm -hmm. in the top graph, we're talking about decibels. Decibels. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's really cool. Maybe. Yeah. I'll put. Oh, I'll put Justin's other example later when it comes up. That will be look really cool in this actually. Um, totally. Yeah. Okay, and, and that was that... a great analysis of wow. <laughs> oh, I didn't even show formants. That's how I. That's that's what made us <laughs> in the first place. So silly. Okay. Um, okay. Wow. I don't know how to show formants though. Ooh. I don't either. Uh, we, oh, wow. Yeah, I... what we're seeing is that you're, I, okay, so then I can give my practical de definition of formants more readily now, which is you just control how much overtone and what shape of overtones will come out of your mouth from a vocal perspective, but from an instrument perspective, it's not, it's similar, but yeah, so what you were doing is, ah, uh, when you said that, when you did that, you had the the pitch content soared and went high, and then as soon as you went, oh, you're literally blocking those sounds from exiting your mouth, even though they're happening in your mouth or in your vocal cords. Yeah, yeah. So formants are shaping the acoustic resonance of from your vocal tract. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like that's kind of like a reason, like or formants are, are like, you know, when singers like hit high notes and so, and you sometimes hear them change the shape of their mouth to like, because some formants are going to be easier at higher pitches. Like it's going to be hard to do. What's a hard one to do if you're trying to sing really high? Like, ah. The word easy. Just try to say easy really high. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> it's awful, <laughs> you know. <laughs> But like if I you find said, like going ah, to ooh is always easier. Then you can. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I think ah is what they go to mostly. And oh. If I need to squeeze out a really high pitched sound, I think it's easiest to go like e. e. Yeah, well, squeezing. <laughs> squeezing is never the word that an opera singer wants to be oh, in yeah, a no, review no. about their. <laughs> 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 That's so true. <laughs> they squeezed out those high notes. Yeah. 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 That would be quite a diss. Um, anyway, so yeah. I'll play Justin's example one more time and listen for the formant. Oh, it's also like a cat's mouth. Cats yeah. really use formants too, I was just thinking. Totally. Because they're meow. Yeah. They're changing their... They don't do that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just don't do that. of a flat formant, I guess. Hmm. And then I actually hear it rounding out. That's a good way to put it. I hear it flat and then it goes to round, which hmm. could be for a variety of reasons. Anyway, um, it was a cool opening to the episode. And then immediately mm -hmm. we hear the M count kids thing. 
those were not the correct notes. Is that but, you know. actually, so it occurred to me that that could be diegetic in this particular episode because it specifically happened. So, so the subtitles actually said bell chimes and that it happened in the morning when the droid came in to like wake them up. So basically somebody comes in the room, pushes a button, that sound plays, and then they leave the room. And I thought, oh, oh that's is there any way that... I don't, I don't know. It's hard to tell, but that's what I saw. Then again, sometimes it'll, the, sometimes the subtitles will say like tense music or something. Absolutely. But that is, it does sound like, it does sound like the kind of thing that could be a bell chime as well. The only reason it doesn't, that I'm not sure if it, Okay. It didn't sound diegetic because it wasn't mixed in a way that sounded like it was coming from the world, but I could see how it could, how they could do that. They could cross that barrier. I would, I would expect different sound mixing if so, but mm -hmm. I think, oh, also, you know, okay. Another thing is it kind of slowed down and kind of, there's a little bit of rhythmic variation. Like it played a few times in a row and it was a little bit like slower and then I was like, the notes more spaced out. So I think that would not have happened if it were just a, a bell chime. Though I do like to imagine that there's variation because there's actually a person like doing the chimes like at the opera or whatever. Like, doo -doo. Um, oh, I wondered if it could be diegetic in this episode. Yeah, like I wouldn't be surprised if they came out and said that it was diegetic, but then I would be dissatisfied with how it was mixed. That's all. Totally. I think. Yeah. It makes me think about the create, like the creation of it from a, from a story perspective too. I think that's interesting. Like what did Hemlock hire a musician or did he look up like, what are the most relaxing notes and then just put them <laughs> I <don't> there? Think so. <laughs> <laughs> what are the most relaxing notes? I don't want to stress the kids out. <laughs> Yeah, them with performing. my. Yeah. Yeah. Super calming. Like, I think it would be fine if the, if the playback, if the variation, if the rhythmic variation happened, if not for like the fact that there was more, <clears throat> like the attack seemed longer on some of them. Like it didn't, it didn't sound as percussive as I would. If it sounded more percussive, then I would think, okay, maybe someone's just playing it slowly a few times. There's a little bit too much just sustain and slower attack that it was like, uh, I don't think so. Um, There's what I would chimes. call like the human element sound there. It doesn't sound like it was mm. just like some like a recording played mm. by... What does SDH mean? <laughs> oh, oh, I sorry. I'm reading your comments out of order, Chuck. Oh my gosh. Disney Plus drives to have closed captions or subtitles for the deaf and hard of hearing in English on all titles. Okay. Um Yeah, I usually I usually watch with the captions on, but I didn't catch that. Anyway. Um I would be all for them adding the bell chimes in diegetically in a future episode if they choose to do that even more points if we see a, the person playing the bells yeah, uh, totally. what I did appreciate about the opening of this episode is I like that we just got right into it like it just quickly kicked into gear it didn't waste time like getting to the setting it was just like all right we're on Tantus let's jump right back into that room let's do the M count chime and then we'll go to back to the triplet thing as Omega sitting down at the table and so yeah I like that it started just really briskly it's good it did I thought that the use of um so I call it the confinement theme in this episode which totally is it is it not the confinement or is it oh. is it not the confinement theme do you mean the this one this the theme that we hear a lot Maybe let me let me double check with in the moment. 
I wrote down that it first entered at 1.30, so I'm just going to listen to it there. And... Then, yeah, that's that. <laughs> yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Yes. Like this. Do we, so do we call it that? We don't call it confinement theme. We call it... Oh, I... I name to be discovered like I think I think like at first I called it like the Dr. Carr being uneasy theme but now I think it's mm. more like than Project Necromancer probably um yeah I might actually call it if I were to name it I think I would name it like c- B confinement theme Ooh, okay. kind of like because it uses the same kind of vibe and instrumentation feel. it has the same feeling mm-hmm. I think and I can definitely see that yeah. So maybe it's kind of like a, a very, or even an A prime. It could even be like confinement prime. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, let me try to find... I'm going to call it that, confinement prime. Confinement crime? Mostly because in my notes, I repeatedly called it confinement themes. So. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did you say confinement crime? Oh, confinement prime. With oh, prime. Okay, okay. okay. Primus. Like yeah. a tick mark. Yeah, I see. Because I see. in music, when we talk about form, if there's something, and we call that thing A, and then there's that thing, but a little bit different, we call it A prime. Mm-hmm. And then if that thing happens even yet a third level of difference, then we would call it A double prime, right? Like you just, and, and prime is just a tick mark, like a uh, an apostrophe. An apostrophe, yes. A single apostrophe. Yes. Like, I mean, the same thing in math. Oh, yeah. I forget <laughs> that. It's probably also the same thing in, like, when I think of, like, literature analysis. Yeah. Sort of. Like, form yeah. and stuff. Um, hey, Gary. Hi, thanks Gary, for Gordon. stopping by. Um, yeah, the, but the, the confinement theme, the first uh, version of the confinement theme, just to remind everyone is okay i'm going to put it on the screen i'm going to screenshot it very badly is this oh yeah it is very different yeah yeah i mean it kind of has a similar vibe though like Really some... It already lends itself to thir- to thirding. Like I mean, yeah. They 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 clearly live in the same world, I think. But I think like again, this is like why the Tantist facility a lot of the like the the synthiness of it all, synthy minor stuff, feels very part of like the signature sound of that place, at least score wise. Um, yeah, I love the idea from a form perspective of doing a film score for a for a facility or a space and having that be the theme, but then every project gets its own sub theme or every department mm. gets its own sub theme. I think that's a cool idea. Kind of like how you were saying, like this is the vault slash project necromancer. Yeah. I, I think that's a cool way to organize things from a compositional perspective. Totally. Um, oh, oh yeah. Okay. So then we actually got the, that theme again, like I think for the first time on the strings, yeah, at 245 with yeah. actual triplets. Yeah. yeah. It was like it was like actual triplets cohesively aligned. This is uh, that's what I wrote was it was the first time that I feel like we heard it as like no, nah, we're like this is a we're playing this as a melody right now. What do you mean by actual triplets? Oh, that's funny. I feel like uh, let me listen were to it. Were they fake triplets before? <laughs> Like, is it know, because I'm thinking da, 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 oh. da, am I is that a little bit different have we heard that step you're right it is different at the end it's it's like 
sorry. Something like that. Yeah, da da. Because that's like a real triplet. <laughs> what do you mean by a real triplet? <laughs> a real triplet is occurred. This is fake, of course, what I'm saying. But a real triplet <laughs> is created when there's a step and it, it's like ba da da ba da da ba da da one two three. A fake okay, triplet okay. is when it's like ya da da. It's not step words. Fake so it's no step. Okay, fake. so you mean it's actually three notes different notes rather yes. than like three different notes that are also That's in a, a triplet in like and, to this. and they're like a three two one one two three they're not like three ran you know three otherwise related notes. that's a real triplet mm -hmm. it's a triplet of notes and time-wise it's a triplet okay okay yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny i mean let's call it a pure triplet a pure triplet okay that's hilarious yeah. Um. <laughs> but it was really successful in the episode. It really got this kind of heart wrench moment for me. And that episode, that theme, I feel like hasn't been used for heart wrench yet. Mm. Much. I mean, there's things that were unsettling, but. Yeah, I think you're right. Cause it's been used for more of the mystery stuff or on un un like the unsettling thing. But this, because not only was it on strings and slightly different, it was like played pretty warmly because strings have actually have a mm -hmm. lot of different sounds. So strings can be very creepy, but this was kind of warm. And then there was also a big crescendo, like a big swelling mm -hmm. of something. Yeah. And the, I, I would include part of what made him warmer was there was more vibrato in mm. this string because that theme is really associated with that vibrato -less kind of like, like not synth. like and there's no like discrete ending usually for the note it's usually like ba ba yeah. as opposed to ba da da it it's more tangible it's more real it was good yeah i liked it yeah um it's like things are really ramping up emotionally here and um then we <laughs> then we end up on wherever Rampart and Hunter and Echo, sorry, Echo, this is before Echo lands. Okay, we're on, I think Bora Vio is what it's called. I don't remember more details about that planet, but that's what it's yeah. called, according to Wikipedia. Um, and, okay, there, there have been a couple fun insults. Yeah. Are you, oh, are you talking oh, about sorry. the music? I was listening when, to it. When Echo lands? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's like mm -hmm, that was nice. Mm -hmm. And then Echo calls Rampart a hydro snake, <laughs> which <laughs> try. You know what? I need to just start keep tra keeping track of Star Wars insults. Okay, Star that is Wars insult. you do need to keep track of that. Yeah, um, maybe because I'll because I think I'll there's like another one in this episode. Your... Oh, thank you. Yeah, we should keep a list of this. I've I've, I've decided. Start. What are? What's the other one that happened in this episode? It was later. Mm. Oh, Maybe we'll come to it. Okay. I hope we come to it. I mean, we will. Maybe we'll think of it though in the. Yeah. Okay. But let us know in the chat if you remember. <laughs> okay. Oh no! I know what it is. It's overheated Gamorians. <laughs> okay. Tagging that Star Wars insults. <laughs> What was that music all about when Echo arrived? Well, it sounded familiar, didn't it? <laughs> did it sound familiar it to you? It sounded familiar to me. I At first I was like, oh, is that Echo's theme or something? Um, but also it sounds like something that we've heard with... It reminds me of the I mean... thing from the Clone Wars. Or No, you know what? It actually reminds me of Rebels. But I know it's not on purpose. Oh. Dee, 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 dee. It did have a classic feel, meaning classic related, similar to what I consider like old Star Wars music. But also, I mean, the whole, I mean, sometimes when I'm writing down about themes, I'm just like, there's a leap and then some steps. That's always how it is. That That's like the most popular 
combination of thing and and uh this is quite a statement i guess but i feel like the most popular type of theme for the bad batch music is like a leap and then some steps uh, of different interval you know they that that's it's not like a profound statement but (laughs) (laughs) because that's all there is is leaps and stuff but you mean in the in the theme that we hear when echo lands yeah, that? that's, that's, that's classic. Bad, yeah. bad tree. Doo, doo, doo. So it's like a fifth. All I can think of, no, am I thinking of Rebels or am I thinking of Resistance? Doo, 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 or am I thinking of many things? It just sounded like a lot of things. Yeah, yes. okay, yeah, Genia did stand out to me. I wrote in my notes, theme question from somewhere, question mark. But I don't remember exactly where it's from. Lisa, or sorry, Max says, if you listen to that song Inferno by Bella Porch and Suburban, the music sounds like just like the cl- clone confined theme. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> nice. That's funny. I'm just going to look it up. Bella Porch. Okay. Okay. I'll listen to it later. Um, okay. Ender says, a fake triplet is one that is a triplet time-wise, but alternates two notes consistently across triplets. Exactly. That C, is a fake triplet. E flat, C, E flat, C, E flat. So it's like Ender has phrased it properly. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. Instead of one. turning two notes into a group of three, fake. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I can't believe I'm using that terminal that like uh I, I rarely have that kind of humor is the kind that I go to. Uh, yeah. And Ender's good at yes anding in a way that confuses me for days. <laughs> um, I just Great. looked up fake triplets and I see. It there's... is the job of the master to confuse <laughs> the disciple. <laughs> There's no such thing as a fake triplet. However, there is, however, mixed triplets that can consist of identical twins and a fraternal baby. <laughs> That's also related, right? Where did you even find that quote? I don't know, just a Google search. Wow, how fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> That's okay, good. So the- the clones uh, and Rampart board Echo Shuttle. Speaking of things that are three, they're going to Imperial Station 003 mm-hmm. on Coruscant. Indeed. Mm-hmm. And they will need clearance codes, but that's going to be hard because clearance codes change every rotation. Mm-hmm. And then that's Rampart a makes a big thing about how we can't wear this uniform because he was a vice admiral and this is a captain's uniform. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Which is pretty funny. Um... And we hear Rampart's theme briefly after he makes the big show of I can't wear the wrong uniform. Do we hear that? At, uh, there were, I made a note about at 540 there being foreshadowing music after Rampart said, do you think I'd lie? Oh, and I've been try- I was, the whole episode, I was just trying to decide, like, is the music implying that Rampart is going to betray them? Or is the music pretending to make us stressed about the whole Rampart thing so that then when he doesn't betray them, we feel good about it. Uh, I was listening, just trying to figure out which one of those or if something else might be the case. If anybody had a feeling about how that, so how that's a good question because what we hear there is Rampart's theme, which has, so it, it is Rampart's theme, but like, it begs because his theme is intrinsically ominous. So, if we're hearing, as long as we're hearing his theme, it's hard to say whether it's just there. It's because he's on screen and he's doing a thing, or if it's, or if we're, we are to take the similar ominous. Like, I don't know how many leaps mm-hmm. we're supposed to make, and I think that is a confusing thing about having themes for people who are clearly like bad or good or you know evil or heroic or whatever Mm -hmm. and and if their character is given an opportunity to show a different side of them continuing to use the same theme in a similar way is a little bit confusing but it could also it could also represent the 
vantage point of the Bad Batch who don't trust him. I think that's also just a really great point to bring up in terms of film scoring as a as a as a general topic is it it oversimplifies our idea of what bad people and good people are and makes it harder for us to recognize that you know that there's a lot of gray area in between those things uh when you have a bad person and they have a bad person theme yeah yeah or and or a good person and a good person theme it makes you know it makes them seem almost godlike or uh, just something that that's it puts them on a pedestal that is not necessarily real leia for sure would have experienced that i would think yeah but like also using a character on screen you don't always have to use that person's theme you could you could score it for the emotion of the scene itself that is always an option or to develop a theme or something so yeah it's I guess film scoring can be can reduce characters to the archetypes that we I don't know you know the picture the full picture that we get with when they're first introduced with the theme I mean I'm thinking of the rise of Skywalker when Ben Solo you know when Kylo Ren turns back to the light side and he his theme gets swapped gets changed because it would no longer really be appropriate to have his super you know villainous sounding theme okay it's a mm-hmm. good song inferno i think you'll love it cool like i look forward to listening to to it the way echo said you've been demoted to rampart and that deep clone voice was really funny yeah agreed <laughs> um it's nice that they can boss rampart around a little bit um so then the shuttle t- takes off, and again, we, we hear the Bad Batch theme. We, he- we hear the Bad Batch theme quite a bit throughout this episode, and this one was cool with very big brassy co- like big brass chords. Um, and then we go back to the Tantus facility, and Omega is, you know, stealing a little tool, hiding it up her sleeve, watching Dr. Carr drop blood. Um, yeah. The... The detuned wind notes were very creepy during this episode. I feel like they increased their creep. Do you have a timestamp? I wrote somewhere in between 6.30 and and then I wrote at 7.18 the harp. Yeah, so yeah, so it would definitely be before 7.18. That's when the tweezer the tweezer was taken was perceived to be taken so wind like woodwind or like that is what i well i could mean like synth wind right yeah yeah like in the 640s it's very creepy yeah there's like there's that like synthy Like to me, it sounded a bit like, um, all right, here we go. Okay, it's a little closer to something. Mm-hmm. playing of it reminded me of Sweeney. What was that? Oh, sorry. Oh, Your yeah, playing also... of that reminded me of Sweeney Todd a little bit. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. I don't know why I just did. Do you know what part? Just generally of Sweeney Todd. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to... That was... Anything more specific there. It's on time. 
And what's funny is like the minor, th oh God, why do I keep doing that? The minor third in the, I was like, oh, the beginning of the emperor's theme. Oh. I think it's a coincidence, but still, when I first heard the, yeah. that minor third, I was like, are they going to do the emperor? No, they're not going to do the emperor's theme. Okay. Uh what they did do that was cool, interesting right there was at 718, I noted that the, um, when, so it's after the Omega has already taken the tweezers and th they bring in that harp, which I realize I think is connected to Omega. I realize like when the harp is used, ah. I feel like it's Omega being hopeful, like Omega plus hope. Uh, but Emery, I think, notices that the tweezers were missing and looks back at Oh. at Omega, like, I see what you did, and I'm not, I'm choosing not to comment. I feel like that's what was going on right there. Oh, interesting. I didn't and I notice that. Yeah. I like that. I, I hope that is, yeah. Did anyone mm -hmm. else notice? Did anyone else take that, interpret it that way? Let us know. Um, oh, yeah, then there's this new character, Dr. Scalder. What a name for one. Dr. For one. Scalder. Dr. Scalder. For when her, her, when, yeah, when that name finally came up, I was like, really? <laughs> uh, it's hard to get duh. more villainous. I know. It's going to scald. Okay, Jeannie noticed that too. I was wondering if you, I was wondering if you noticed that, Jeannie. I felt like you probably would. Um, Dr. Scalder does not approve of Omega mingling with the other children, which I'm glad that someone is saying it. I mean, I, you know, because we've been wondering why they're just letting her mingle. So good. I'm glad that there is a, I'm glad that there's someone with some sense up there. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah. So Omega tells the kids, surely enough, tells the kids she's a skip before and she's going to do it again and she's going to take them all with her. Um, and then there's like Omega hatching a plan. Music comes in. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And what was that? What was the Omega hatching a plan music like? I'm trying to remember. Oh, yeah, it was kind of, oh, yeah, I remember. It was like progressively ramping up like rhythm, like kind of an ostinato, like boom, 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 boom. Kind of like military style drums, but not snare. Oh, yeah, the drum came in with a boom. Yeah. It's like doom, 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 doom. Yeah. And it's appropriate because we can hear her dialogue very easily because she's kind of higher pitched. It's very bass heavy. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they do a good job of that. keeping that going with just random synth bumps, uh, low, low end kind of. Mm -hmm. And then they. To and the brass come in in a way that is reminiscent of the Bad Batch theme. They're like, do, do, do. And then we're back on Echo's shuttle. Um, and, I, and I noticed that they call like the thing that is 5-02, five 5-TAC-02. Zero two, five zero two. Is TAC a common way to say the dash? Oh, that's a good idea. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure. Um, so Rampart demands assurance that they will release him if their mission succeeds. And then Crosshair's like, we'll have to trust each other. And Wrecker's like, don't mess this up. Overheated Gamorreans, dis. Um, and then they're in, uh, they're, they're in the landing in the docking bay, bay in Imperial Station 003. There is a dangerous sounding string music. Um, and then there's, I don't know, I wrote music with a backbeat. <laughs> like the drums kick in. And then a really cool thing happens at 1218. Um, and I'm wondering if this is one of the things you were thinking about, Christina? Perhaps. I would have first mentioned that thing at 1138. Okay. Because I think... Oh, yeah, you're right. Well, you're right. if it's the thing we're talking about, I'm thinking of dee 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 like dee 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 uh, like, like dee tunes like... But they were on a D, which was cool, because I was mm -hmm. like, ha-ha, it's like a D-D-D sound, and it's on a D. 
and we all love that the whole DSUA thing. I, all of their music was in D, I think, was in D minor. It often uh, is. Not, not the confinement, not the Tantus scenes, but all of the rest of the Bad Batch scenes of this episode. Mm-hmm. I think we're in D. And then, yeah, at 12.15, they play it with uh, at G. So, D, 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 D. Was that, is that a D? It sounds, it sounds like a D to me. Um, yeah. And then, G, D, 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 D. Does everyone know what we're referring to? <laughs> yeah, maybe a little more. Because it's like it's like an unstable. I wonder how they did that. It almost sounds like blowing into like the mouthpiece of a saxophone or something, but then like maybe I don't know. It's probably a synth, but it sounds very windy, kind of like you were saying before. It's like, it's an unstable pitch. Like it would be. It's more like, I don't know. Um, Mm -hmm. Very unsettling. There's a lot of ways to do that, I guess. Um, But yeah, it's hard to know which one. Yeah. And then we get Um, this. Oh, go ahead. Mm -hmm. And then probably it's just right here in the same scene is I do enjoy when uh, Admiral Rampart actually switches to the Imperial accent. Mm -hmm. I I feel like he wasn't totally using it before, but when you switch to the Imperial accent, he says, if you have an issue with that, and then he says, uh, shall we, Uh, you know, like the S's and the SH's are really interesting in the Imperial aristocratic accent and it occurred to me that it, the imperial um their accent favors discrete non-mixed sounds so oh. they like pure vowels and like they prefer I, I i was like it's weird that they're making the sh really quiet i feel like it's a strange thing and like, i've what's i remember word? hearing that kind of in the word schedule too oh yeah the schedule. in the word shall and also issue instead of issue Mm-hmm. Uh, and so it almost made me think that, like, I saw a mirror there because the, the, the Empire is, is very, very xenophobic and disfavors the concept of mixing and really likes purity of bloodlines and of being very human and whatever. And I hear that reflected in their choices of saying things like issue instead of issue. And... Do you know if this maps on to, like, a particular British dialect? I don't know. Mm. I'm not sure a good way to say that. There are, I, I wouldn't know like a specific it's not RP, name of it? a British dialect, no, but, but in general, it is true that a lot of, a lot of more aristocratic ways of speaking are discrete in that way, uh, which is kind of a way of showing a level of education where it's not like you learned the word from the sounds that you heard it spoken, but like, you know how the word is spelled, uh, uh, which would have been really uncommon for people. Uh, yeah, that's an, that's, that's true, but, um, it's intimidating. It's imitating upper-class British accents. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's the sense I get in general. Okay, we get this music, and I don't know if it's a new Rampart theme, question mark, um, and it goes, let's see, when he's into, okay, it's funny when he's intimidating, he's intimidating the stormtrooper and doing a really good job at it, um, and we get some music, yeah, Jeannie, I was wondering if it was RP, but I don't know if it's fully that. That was fun. Mm -hmm. There. Rampart intimidation. I don't know. Um, 
Palpatine sometimes takes on a very British royal family sound, especially when addressing the Senate. Yeah, that's so true. <laughs> yeah, for safe and secure society. Mm hmm. Um, okay, so there's that new, that rampart violin thing, which is it, good. I like that. Um, rampart requests the station's manifest. Uh, Hunter stuns the tech. And Wrecker's like, where, the lieutenant's like, where's your captain? And he's like, captaining? <laughs> that also had a very D minor vibe, the notes there. I feel like it was like, I wrote that it was like A, B flat, G, A. So it was like, dee, 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 dee. which I would take to be like a D minor thing. You mean at the captaining line? Uh, I think so. I just wrote like around like at 1430 when he's questioned. Okay. Captaining. <laughs> Sorry. That's just notes? like, I, th I thought it was A, B flat, G, A. Although I think what I was singing just now was not those notes. Oh, yeah. Is it very soft and high pitched? Is it like a high piano, high synth sound? Because shortly after that, we get like also a, a low, like a low brass, ominous four note thing. I don't know if you would. I'm just listening to it. Which I think we hear that a totally. lot. I just never bothered to write it down before, I guess. Um, yeah. And now that, now that I've written it down, I hope it comes up a lot more so that I have it validated in writing. <laughs> I hope you do. Thank you. And then we I, head to the vault. Yes. Well, I really like that there's a science vessel and that it's called the science vessel. It's pretty great. Yeah, that is funny. Um, and there's this, there's a music. So when they're talking about the plan to board the science vessel, they're like, okay, I'll play the music from it. Yeah, it's stressful. Yeah. put the transcription up um max i'm using i'm using a yamaha cp5 stage piano and it just has built-in um built-in voices like so built-in sounds so i was using the one that was called mellow brass one <laughs> nothing fancy <laughs> but that's yeah it's my all-purpose piano <laughs> All-purpose stage piano. Yeah, so as this is happening, we have some like other violin stuff happening. So it's like... And then this note starts coming. And then it's... Sorry. Not a violin. So it's very, um, the contrast makes it sound creepier than it does when I'm just playing the top line. Um, but it is like the strings in basically unison slash octaves other than the like extra violin line. And it's pretty creepy. <laughs> but it, but it's, I think it's, I like it. Um, 
I like it because of like the chromaticism and, and the the leaps, I think, and the sort of the rhythm of it. Um, yeah. I think it's one of the nicer, mo nicer moments from the season for me. Um, let's see. Oh, Robert's like, wonderful. We're all going to die. Um, which is, I don't know, clone humor. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna, yeah. I guess. And then that music is like, There's a big crescendo to a thing. Um, oh, okay. Then we're back to the force kids. The toddler kid is making baby noises. It was cute. I think it's funny how they chose species that are like all different solid colors, basically. I mean, it, it makes it look, it looks cool on screen. I also color coded my notes of their names. So like I just like wrote Jax's name in green and Sammy's <laughs> name Sammy's name in blue. Nice. And that's nice. how I'm keeping track of who they are. <laughs> Although I don't have a good or I don't know, never mind. Yeah. For Bear Bear and I just did black. Mm. It's not gonna write in white. And then we have like Scalder, like is something what's going on? And then we have this like repeated four note thing that is reminds me of the m count kids a little bit um yeah I, I agree i agree there's a lot of humor in this episode and maybe th maybe that was necessary for to kind of counterbalance the heavy stuff mm. yeah it allows you to be comfortable enough to feel the heavy stuff yeah yeah. Okay, so it's an appropriate noise. Let's see. Okay. Yeah. occurring this little four note thing yeah that was nice and they also I wrote down at like 1730 that I enjoyed there was kind of like a nice dry wooden ah. kind of a thing like I, the the percussion part that went along with that was nice and it felt wooden and dry that's a good description yeah yeah It's satisfying. It's a satisfying sound. It's and then tactile. after the, what was what did you say? It's tactile. It is tactile. Um. After the droid leaves, Omega heads back to her room. Scalder notices her movement and walks down to investigate. She uses her tool to remove some of the blocks leading to the dumb waiter. Scalder enters the vault, but Omega has managed to hide her handiwork. Um, Max says, I think they used stock sound effects for those baby noises. What makes you think that? Mm. Did they sound like it? or I'm not good at... I don't know. Is there a baby credited in this episode? I don't know where I would begin to, 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 to figure that one out. Um, there's a baby here. There is. And then at 1757, there's like these very strident bum, strings come bum, in bum, as Dr. Bear. Scalder walks in. And they're kind of scary. They're like, it's basically like, <clears throat>
Mm -hmm. Just like very strident sounding quarter notes. Strident like, quarter like, notes. That's a good mm -hmm. way to say it. And then Omega tells the kids. Scholar. What was that? And then Omega's like, hello, Dr. Scalder. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Jeannie, how else would you get those kind of sounds? It wasn't Dee Bradley Baker, was it? <laughs> <laughs> At this point, I would believe anything. Uh, yeah, totally. Uh, hello, late for the Hey, Matthew. Good to see you. Um, we're discussing whether could tweet at the sound team and ask, that's true. Um, we're, we're speculating where they got the baby mm. sounds from. Uh, yeah. Like were they stock sounds? Was it D Bradley Baker? Uh, yeah. Okay. So who's the voice of Baron? <laughs> the voice of, is that, is that, is that what that kid's name was? Yes. B-A-Y-R-N. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so then Monsters, Inc. recorded one of the filmmaker's kids. Mm. Okay, so now we have for Boo, yeah. Oh, Monsters, Inc. is so good. Okay, so, but oh, also, that wow, Sorry. that's like quite a credit to, to get as a kid to get to play Boo, basically. Um, or did the, okay, wait, did the kid, do you know if the kid did all the lines and like did the whole thing or just did some of the sounds? I guess Boo doesn't really speak that many. I guess Boo just okay. Never mind. Um, I don't want to spoil monsters. First, I thought you meant Majin Boo from Dragon Ball, and I got really excited because they call him Boo. And then I was like, oh, it's it's not from that. No. <laughs> 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 Nor is it like Boo Radley. Um, I mean, I mean the Force Kid that Cad Bane kidnapped. Mm -hmm. Oh, stock baby sounds. They just followed the kid around and recorded her. Wow. Yeah. Did she get paid? Um, okay, so now we have the evil astromech <laughs> droid. That was hilarious. Yeah, that was I've never cool. seen the herding of droids like that. Like that. It was hurting droids. Yeah. Crazy. And it had a higher rank than they did. I think. Yeah. <laughs> Which is pretty I funny. Didn't re like, yeah, I totally forgot to think about the astromechs having different ranks. I mean, I, I, yeah, I didn't forget to, I just don't think I would have, I don't know that I would have thought about it. They for sure do though, I guess. Yeah. And we also get mouse droids. We get, like R2 units and mouse droids. And this is one of the examples that Justin sent over. So I'm going to share my screen again so you can see the spectrogram. Yeah, okay. And then I will load up Justin's, let's see. I'm gonna load up Justin's sound in here. The spectrums. So that we can see it. Cool. Oh, the unit, the leader was an R3 unit. Okay. Yeah. I was wondering that. Okay. Okay. Instead of an R2. And the R2s had some cool transparent heads. Okay. So here we're looking at the example that Justin made. It's not scrolling. Oh, it's funny how like <laughs> how different each of those I'm trying to find it strike a good balance between oh yeah, like some of them they look like ladders. Very interesting, yeah. Nice. <laughs> that's so cool. Thank you, Justin. And the ones... Yeah, that's really cool. 
the ones that are more piercing for sure have a clear ladder. Yep. Yep. Look. Yep, like this one. Well, mm -hmm. and yep. Ding. That one. Yep. Mm -hmm. You can clearly see like pitch material because you're mm -hmm. seeing a big concentration of pitch in defined places where the more, whereas the more soundy ones, the ones that are more like, right. whoosh, are going to be more of a wash. Although you're, st yeah. you're still seeing defined like pitch material. Yeah, most of this is pretty defined, but like this is going to be a little bit more washy. Okay, it goes by so fast, but you know, we, we did the kind of fake white noise thing earlier. The other thing you're hearing is that the ones that look washy and sound washy are lower pitches too. Yep, yep, so yep, yep. I was going to say the also. washiness is happening. Yeah, and the ones that are piercing are also higher. Yeah. Um, also, if you go back to that first one that we were just, I'm sorry, that's must, I don't know how hard that is. That one easy. that we were, that you first paused on. The like um, one that was probably this one. Yeah. It looks detuned from, or I, I was, I was wondering if it's going to be an example. If it's not that one, then it's the one right after it. This one. It was only when it was in the even more zoomed in state that I could see that, but oh, it also okay. might be like too hard to find such a thing in a hunt like it's the kind of thing that you can like save when you're looking at it but harder oh, oh, oh that is, one. This, is this it i'm curious if that's decent because you can see that the, the pitch Sorry. wavers can you like play here. it again because I, I talked during it <laughs> it's okay so it's not a detune that's actually a change in pitch is well it's it's kind of like a tiny i don't know it sounds like that's what i heard it sounds like more is added there like the pitch does change because you can see the line gets waves go a little bit like mm -hmm. it also gets thicker. So it's there's maybe more complexity there. That's cool. Oh, and here's like a squiggle. OK, there's too much happening in the squiggle. <laughs> I think one thing that I'm learning is that if we see something here that looks like a bend, it's we're looking too zoomed out to perceive something else like yeah we're looking at like discrete definite different pitches i think if there's Probably. any movement that we see yeah that's true because we're looking at thousands of hertz at one time so yeah. anything we can perceive is going to be big yeah wow i mean if you were to change the y-axis to be like tiny then we would probably be able to see if it was detuned stuff but that would yeah, like this is as small as it goes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's like small enough to make it. Each thing lasts super at? long. Yeah, like this is not even one second. Yeah. Yeah. And at that point, our eyes wouldn't be able to track that line anyway. Yeah, because it'd be like. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Oh, this is kind of fun. So fun. I like that. This, is kind of, this actually looks really cool. It's like it's. I'm so glad we something. did that. Yeah. Well, just that's a cool way to animate. It's it like what they're when when you do see a droid's speech personified, it, it, like visually, it, in you know, like you like they animate the droid talking. I feel like it was kind of viewed like that. Yeah. Just a real time look at the volume, I guess. Yeah. I kind of want to put in another one of Justin's examples now. Okay.
interesting how clearly you can see rhythm in this. Yeah. At least in some parts. Yeah. Okay, some comments. There's only two episodes. Oh, not sure if the new models are inherently higher rank. Um, there's only two episodes. Oh my gosh, of The Bad Batch left. Um, I feel like there's a lot to happen in just two episodes. It's not going to happen, but I would love the next episode to just be Jedi, sorry, Omega and the Jedi kids, the, the force sensitive kids. Um, they unleash the zone beast and the chaos in, and in the chaos free the remaining clones. Okay, at first I thought you meant like in the chaos. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thrawn saves yeah. <laughs> Arlani. No, we need Arlani to save them, not Thrawn. Yeah. I don't know why. Um, uh, where did we leave off? My next note was like either kind of like oh, oh, wait, I just wanna, oh wait, I just want to oh, yeah, uh, answer this one question. Is that the same synth they used for the R2-D2 sound? Okay, no. Um, oh, you mean, okay, wait, in the episode or in Justin's recreation? In the episode, I'm going to go out a, on a limb and say probably didn't use the same sound synthesis method. Um, the way that Mm. the way that R2-D2, the way that Ben Burt created R2-D2 was so specific. Um, and I just don't know if, I would love to see a video of them, of them, of them doing it, put it that way. But the actual synthesizer is very hard to get these days that was used. And I mean, maybe they have it there, but let me, let me, let me find you a, okay, let me find you something that might be of interest. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you, Max, you might find this interesting. A entire deep dive on this channel about making R2 noises. So Ben Burt used a, an ARP 2600 uh, and a recording or and his baby crying and kind of put different things together and it's this whole thing. But um, yeah, if you want to learn how to reverse engineer the sound of R2, here's just a, like a, here's, here's, a, it gets very, we get very in the weeds on this episode. And yeah, Justin's creation is, um, not that I, I do have it written down. Justin's creation is made on the Arturia Microfreak, and he used FM synthesis. FM synthesis. Yeah. Frequency modulator synthesis. FM synthesis. Yes. Frequency modulation synthesis. Here's a little, here's a little preview. FM synthesis uses a modulator oscillator and a sine wave carrier oscillator. So oscillators are just the two sound sources, basically. Um, the modulator oscillator modulates the frequency of the waveform generated by the carrier oscillator within the range, pr thus producing new harmonics. These harmonics are known as sidebands. Um, and you can see how the resulting waveform occurs. Uh, anyway, yeah, you're welcome. Can I? Can you leave that up and me oh, make yeah. a proposal that this kind of explains why Omega's blood is important as a <laughs> carrier, or like, or no, she would be the M count. Like, I think this is relevant to like what we're talking about. Like, they're trying to like synthesize M count into oh my a gosh. clone. Saying seems relevant. Yeah, no, it turns out FM synthesis is how <laughs> M count transfer works. Um, is how clones are made. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, that is like the word synthesis. Kind of there. There's like acoustic instruments and there's synthetic instruments. Like in a way. Like synthetic, mm -hmm. like clone, like a thing that was created, as opposed to what's a yeah, good way? No. A, a thing that was digitally created and then 
birthed or printed or something or produced as opposed to built with materials. It's interesting. Force midichlorian synthesis. FM synthesis, exactly. Ah, uh, yes. Now, what would, Force the, midichlorian. what would the harmonics be? How would they manifest? Would they be like ripples in the force? Extra. Mm. <laughs> like I feel like the lips? harmonics. Oh, I see, I see. Maybe. <laughs> For me, the harmonics, I, I went more like, shall we say, like metaphorical with that. Uh, yeah, we could just carry the metaphor. to be more like, oh, like if you're Ray, then your your force skills are like one type of force skills. If you're Mace Windu, you like see everything as crystals. If you're Dooku, you see everything as weird moments in time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if you're Yoda, then you see people's souls. Souls? I think that's what... That would be I terrifying. remember him describing in one of the High Republic books that like his special power is that he has this like ability to like just like see a person for who they are. See it though, mm. like kind of yeah. in a synesthetic way. For some reason, I don't remember that, but also I kind of yeah, I didn't like those explanations, so I kind of didn't take them very seriously. Oh yeah. Basically, whether I like them or not, that's one of the few things that I catalog is like every time someone describes how they see the some, force. Per, some being in, interacts with the force, I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. Because there's that one that going experiences the, the force as a song. And I was just like, I don't like that. Yeah. Even though, even though I feel like I would, that I do relate to it, but then also I don't like, you know what? I think I just don't, sorry, I'm talking about Avar Chris and the High Republic novels. You are. I just don't like how like, literally it's explained i don't like it being reduced to like i don't i just don't like how it's described that's it the concept is fine but like being like she I, experiences the force like a song and then she hears like the whole symphony coming in and everything i'm just i'm just like don't make it too concrete just let it be i also bet that one of the reasons that you don't like that is because it, it like if it had been applied to a different Jedi, you might have liked it more, but because it was applied to Avar Chris, the perfect Jedi who fits <laughs> the exact like super trope standards of a beautiful, tall, thin woman with long, flowing, gleaming hair with big eyes that attracts all the Jedi men. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, it's like, okay, we're going to give that one. This yeah, it's like, okay, yeah, I think if it had been like Voss that yeah, experienced maybe. everything as a symphony, that might be more interesting. Maybe, but it's going to be hard to sell me on the idea of like melodies of the force because like, why are we reducing, like even just, even just calling, even just reducing it, even just calling it melodies of the force. It's like, okay, in the expansive, like in this universe, this expansive universe, all of the different ways that music might be conceived upon, like conceived of, why are reducing it to melodies also feels like so specific to like mm -hmm. the ways that we talk about music, like in the West and stuff like that. Like it's, mm -hmm. ugh, it's like, it could be timbres. It could be like a sense of harmony. It could be a sense of rhythm. Like, but they choose to like make it too concrete with, in my opinion, not a thorough enough, if, if not understanding, sorry writers, but like at least presentation of it. Like maybe it's just, anyway, okay. Soapbox, okay, I'm, I'm going down. Okay. So I'm you ought to seize the luminous, luminous beings. beings. Um, mommy, where does M count come from? Well, dear, the two <laughs> oscillators love each other very much. <laughs> That's cute. I like um, that. And Matthew says, I hope the final episode might be a longer episode. Will it just end or will it lead into another series? Omega saving four sensitive kids from the empire and creating the path seen in, in the Obi-Wan series. Mm. That's a good question. Now, That's a fascinating idea of them starting the path. Yeah, I have liked that this is the final season. I like that they're, and I think it would show great restraint to not immediately promote a new season of something else. But they probably will eventually continue this, I'm guessing. Maybe I could see Omega being, I could possibly see Omega being part of the creation of the path. I can, I can see that. They can sell me on that for sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, I also hope it's longer because I don't 
as of now, I can only see like, obviously she, okay, she's gonna break them out, that's gonna happen. And then, but what else happens? What else is gonna happen? I don't know. Anyway, there's- but That's accurate. One. Yeah. You, we, we do not know. We do not know. But you know who does know? Who? The Kiners. Oh, the Kiners. You're right. The uh, Kiners do know. They do know. There's <laughs> a moment toward the end of the episode where the Bad Batch theme come in, is in brass over some like tense string chords. So I'm just going to... Yeah, that was, that was pretty... It was like an off Bad Batch theme was what I wrote. Like it was like... Did you say off Bad Batch? It was like unfortunate. It was like unfortunate Bad Batch. I felt like it was foreboding. Oh. Non positive. Creepy. Scary. Stressful. Yeah, that setting is so good. <laughs> it's it's what this Yamaha piano thinks is arco strings. Oh. How did it do? Yeah, the chords there just reminded me of the severance theme a little bit. I'm going to listen to it and make sure that I agree with my statement before I make it that I wrote down. Oh, the unfortunate thing? I wrote... anyway <laughs> that is a really common setting of um or not a common setting but i mean basically what we're hearing is the bad batch theme but with background stuff that completely does not go with it pitch wise and uh i'm sure there's a lot of other composers who have done this but i, I feel like my introduction to that was charles ives who really uh -huh. liked to write uh music with just two keys going on at the same time mm -hmm. or one key going on in the piano and then the vocalist is singing the whatever song but like a half step off from where you would expect to hear it so that it's eerie and unsettling do you wait did you perceive these i don't feel like these are i feel like the pitch material was very cohesive oh like oh yeah i didn't hear it as cohesive I felt it's probably like because it of my singing. Like... <laughs> but let's. Um... That's true. But yeah, so it was I like. Feel like it's like that in the episode too. It may have just been the end notes. I'm not. Maybe I had to transcribe them wrong or something. It's like. <laughs> okay. Okay. I see what you mean. Like there's dissonance, sure. There, no, there's dissonance, but like I don't think I don't feel like. Oh, it's like that's, a I think key. that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's so much dissonance that it. I guess I called it a different key, which might. Yeah, to, I could see that taking it too far. Yeah, Charles Ives what? though is is definitely a cool person to bring up. Yeah. Um. He. Charles Ives, okay, wait, is everyone familiar with Charles Ives? Um, yeah, didn't he, he wrote his first, didn't, I feel like we've talked about him on stream and probably said the same anecdote where he was inspired by the sound of when growing up, he would hear like two marching bands crossing each other or something, mm -hmm. playing different music. And so he was like inspired by the sound of that actually happening. Um, so he Totally. Would, yeah. 
and he wrote a lot of music that was, I mean, a lot of the actual times that he wrote music like that, it would be some sort of piece that had some kind of war related theme. And he was like literally depicting two battle armies playing. Mm -hmm. Like, like sometimes it was very literal. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I know. Anyway, Charles Ives is definitely discussed in the book The Rest is Noise by Alex Ross. Okay. Listening to the yeah. 20th century. Um, those are about all of the notes I had, except David W. Collins did tweet something a couple days ago. I'll just put it, like, you know, the part of, you know, like the end of the episode <laughs> when Rampart's like abort and Hunter's like <laughs> negative. <laughs> Uh -huh. And then they jump into hyperspace. So, yeah, David W. Collins says, Collins says, sorry, there's, there's a show more to this, but anyway. Chills mixing Bad Batch for years, but this negative scene is a real favorite. Lots of time spent crafting with sound, writing music, building tension with alarms, and in the heat of the moment, dropping to near silence for Hunter's final line. Yeah, it was a good ending. And it with a jump to hyperspace. I'm going to say my note, but I don't know if we have to listen to see if it's really there. But I feel like in that time between when the astromechs were being herded and then like the initiation of the launch sequence, the music was going like ba da ba da ba da 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 da. I, I heard that, which, if you know, is the, is the theme from the Milkshake song by Khalees, where she. <laughs> <laughs> that's not what i expected to come out of your mouth i was like oh like the original trilogy <laughs> yeah i i am not taking the time right now to listen back and like really feel certain about that being in there but you can you can listen and and decide if you hear because so she was like the boys are waiting <laughs> I think it was somewhere in between 1917 and 2035, which I decided for the value okay. of finding that tiny moment might not be worth listening to right now on the episode, but I don't know. So I wish I'd put a more clear timestamp on it. Oh, I might be hearing it. I definitely do do. Do, do. Da, I don't da, hear the da, 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 I don't hear the whole da. thing but that's really funny a milkshake song that's what it did make me think of oh my gosh <laughs> um, does anyone else have any like notable sound or music moments from this episode or any um, I don't know throw out a theme that you want to hear next episode Crosshair's theme. Crosshair. Mm -mm. But he's one who we were talking about earlier, whose theme maybe can become like good person theme and bad person theme. Yeah, I think so. Maybe. So that's nice. Yeah, I don't think Crosshair's music is inherently one way or the other. Could your ominous four notes from earlier be Anthem of Evil? Well, let's see. <laughs> I'm going to put them up. Oh, yeah, you're right. That's totally an anthem of evil. Well, okay. I mean, probably, yeah, exactly. Probably coincidence, correct. I think that's, pr but that could explain why, for me, it is in, in my head. <laughs> that could be why it stuck out to me so much. Um, for for the Rise of Skywalker season on Star Wars Music Minute, the like you know how like I do a new cover song for the intro outro music of the season, it's Anthem of Evil. So I've definitely spent a lot of time with that, <laughs> um, playing and recording it and stuff. Yeah, you're right. You're right. It's that. Do you have any other notes from yeah. this episode, Christina? Mm mm. I hope we get 
you know what? I'm, I hope we get a new, not necessarily theme, but good musical moment. Maybe that's not based on an existing theme. Like, oh, I'll, something new, <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Something fresh. Mm -hmm. Also, I want to go back to the, the chamber of Project Necromancer. Mm -hmm. You want to go back in there? If I were Hemlock, now that they found the blood, I would immediately sacrifice Omega. Like, as quickly as possible. Like, kill her? Yeah, or, like, do the thing. Like, I feel like Hemlock should hurry. <laughs> you know, for, if I have Hemlock's best interest in mind, but I he would probably has urge in, him to hurry. He probably has orders to not kill her. And he probably doesn't want to disobey Palpatine. I guess I don't mean kill her, but, like, do the thing. Like, yeah. Stop wasting get time. her blood out. Like, do the transfusion, get her to make more blood, get more blood out. You know, yeah, kind of keep it more of a factory chamber. schedule. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. I've been enjoying how he synth heavy the series has been, and I hope it continues in the last episode. I agree. I think I've, I've been enjoying that as well. It gives it kind of the signature sound. Um, Zillow Beast eating hemlock theme. Matthew just really <laughs> needs the Zillow Beast thing to happen. <laughs> both on screen, <laughs> the theme that goes with it, like, <laughs> that's really funny. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Inspired by Godzilla or something. Mm -hmm. That'd be pretty funny. Yes. I'm just looking forward to the last couple episodes. It's kind of exciting. The last two episodes of the, of the series, period. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Rampart shooting him. <laughs> I guess Rampart could be a good person to do that if that's going to happen. Or they could like take Hemlock to one of those. Oh no, that was, that was on the, that wasn't, that was a chiss thing. Like one of the, you know, like where Yiv was taken prison cell. Yeah. Yeah life sentence um yeah anyway that's all i have christina is that all you have mm -hmm. all right then we will see you all next saturday to talk about the penultimate episode of the bad batch season three thank you so much for joining us and um one more comment at this point i feel like it is impossible to predict that what will happen so i'm just looking forward to seeing how this all ends same i think i'm not going to be trying too hard with the predictions. I just want it to kind of take me for a ride. Yeah. All right. See you all next week. Have a great week and hope you all enjoy the next episode. <gasps> Hi, Ziggy. Bye. Whoa. whoa. <laughs>